microphone and the mouse door. It's all in the back. It's all me. <laughs> So she mentioned my name is Tate Brinton, um, marketing manager at a local digital marketing agency called The Faro, um, located here in Phoenix. Uh, we specialize, or we don't specialize in any specific industry. We have clients across uh, several industries, um, not only local clients, across the country as well. Um, so a lot of fun to be able to work in these different industries, see things across the industries, and share some of those strategies amongst clients. So today, building off what Tammy talked about, um, our presentation looks like it'll kind of go hand in hand in terms of tactics we're, we're talking about and sharing. Uh, I wanted to talk about diversifying your digital strategy and the importance of doing so. <laughs> so here I pull a few headlines. These are from the last month. Uh, Tammy touched on one from Rand Fishkin and the change or the, the changes over time that have happened in the search world um, and kind of what that means. Other ones, Facebook giving users the ability to disconnect their offline data. You know, what will that mean for us? A lot of that's to be determined. Could affect the way we're advertising the data we have on them. Um, threw up an article about TikTok. I'm not going to talk about it specifically, but it's getting a lot of attention. What should brands be doing? Using it more so as a representation of, you know, there's always new platforms, new things happening in the industry that we need to be mindful of. Change is always happening. So we need to diversify so that these changes don't affect us as much as they may if we're, if we're overly reliant on any specific tactic. Um, so as I was going through this, I thought of this, um, especially for this industry, that you sell comfort, but as marketers, you can't enjoy it. If you get comfortable, that's when your competition passes you up. That's when you become susceptible to the changes affecting your business. So don't get comfortable with what we're doing. Always be looking at how you can diversify, how you can adapt to the changes, what else you need to be doing. Um, and then also kind of an overarching uh, rule for everything I'm going to talk about here. No selfish strategies. Try to create a pun because I'm a dad and that's funny. Um, <laughs> My wife would roll her eyes if she knew I included that, but it doesn't help I underlined it so you know it wasn't. A typo, really making sure you, you got it there. Um, but if you think of all the changes that happen in the industry, and, and Tammy touched on this, they're all intended to make the user experience better. That's everything Google does, that's why they, why they control so much of the market, because they took that user-centric approach. Getting users information, new products, all of these things, exists so that you, the user experience and, and the platforms are focused on what users want. And we need to mirror that concept within our strategy. So, so many businesses love to talk about themselves or it's all about me, but talk about things beyond. Look at your consumers, focus on them. What do they want? What do they need? And get them those experiences. So within this, um, of the diversifying your strategies, I wanted to talk about a couple specific things, not necessarily new, but things that can help, some different points that you may be able to employ. Um, and here they are, we'll go through the three. So this was a, a static down, so in, this is specific to hotels, but over or 10, billion, 10 billion last year estimated loss in Cart abandonments from hotel websites. Every industry suffers from you know, website abandonment, cart abandonments. Travel specifically is one of the highest, if not the highest, of any industry. Uh, there is hotels follow suit. So with that, um, what do we do? How can we win? Is this still get You know, how can we try and get some more of those people back? How can we win? You know, even a fraction of that 10 billion will help us out lead to more business. So I wanted to talk about retargeting or remarketing, depending on what you call it. Um, and I know that in and of itself isn't necessarily a new strategy. It's been around for a while. But maybe talk about a way you can change up how you're doing it. Um, so I created here an example of a couple audiences on the left. Might be your typical retargeting audience of you know people have been to your website in the last three days. You can target them, show them an ad, 
And I'll also say with this, you know, if I were to recommend something today, I would say Facebook and Instagram retargeting, probably the easiest to launch and you know, often low cost, um, easy to set up, but see great returns. If the scalability is not huge, but again, to be able to win back some of those customers you may lose otherwise, there's great benefits to doing it. So with the audience on the left, say, you know, do that, or doing that is better than doing nothing. However, if you compare it to the audience on the right, these are things you could pull from your website that people are telling you through their actions, through their behaviors, um, to create a more advanced or more complex audience. And again, thinking with the user in mind, focusing on what they are, if you think of how you could talk to or run ads to these two different audiences, it's obvious that the more the one on the right has more information. You can tailor your creative, your copy specifically to that person. You know, being a father, probably looking for a vacation, etc. You can talk to them specifically versus your general just, hey, you know, come back to our hotel, book with us, whatever it may be. So instead of just, you know, your traditional or simple retargeting, think of what information people are giving you on your website what you can use to identify those people and use that to then feed your audiences and tailor your messaging to them, creating a better user experience. Um, the next one here, so Tammy touched on this. Um, it's been said in the past that your website's the front door to your business. I would say today Google's the front door to your business, so your website's more like the living room. It's still important that it looks good, it works well, but if people can't find the front door, they'll never make it to the living room. So, how are you appearing on Google? Again, it goes hand in hand with what Tammy was talking about, but I wanted to talk about something specifically here, and that's Google My Business. Uh, again, thinking of it as the front door, especially for those businesses with retail locations. Um, I showed this here. This is, if you go to the Google My Business homepage, this is the first thing you see. I think it's important that you know the first thing Google wants you to understand is Google My Business is a tool to engage your customer. If you want Google to think you're using it well, probably a good idea to engage your customers on the platform. So do what Google wants you to do and you'll gain favor with them. Um, with that, a few specifics that uh, you may not be doing on your Google My Business profile. So important, uh, the first two kind of go together that you're responding to all reviews, both the good and the bad. A lot of businesses think you just respond to the bad ones, I don't know why. Emphasize the ones leaving good reviews, but respond to them all. Um, also answer any questions people are asking of your business, and do it thoroughly. Don't just do yes or no answers. Make sure, or use this as an opportunity to, prove, uh, to put out content about you, but still answer the user's questions. Be specific to them. Give them that good experience. Um, with these two, I did some researches of local hotels, and it took me a long time to find a hotel that responded to a single review or answered a single question on their GMB profile. Huge miss, you know, take advantage of this, show Google you're engaging your users and you care. Um, next, and this is one, again, you don't see super often, or the next two here. Updating pictures and videos as well as content on your Google My Business profile. Uh, a lot of this, you don't see a ton of in, uh, interaction with these things, but again, there are indicators to Google that you're keeping an active profile and you're putting information out there for the users that we talk about. So this is one, um, and I'll talk to this graph in just a second, but this was one uh, overall with Google My Business with one of our clients who has 30 plus locations across a few states. This year we've taken a much greater focus on Google My Business and updating their profiles, um, adding to them, staying current, et cetera. With the updating photos and videos and content, a lot of this can be done fairly simple in that you're probably creating these assets for other things within your marketing plan. So you can take those and use them on Google My Business. But again, being active, posting, updating, the last one is obvious, just making sure your business information is accurate and correct. So log into Google My Business, see you know, the features, what's available to you, make sure it's updated, updated show Google that you know, you're using the product, 
in this graph here, this is the, the client I was talking about. So what this is showing is <coughs> website visits from their Google My Business profile. So this doesn't include all of the clicks to call or directions that happen within those map listings. This is specifically people that came to their website from Google My Business. And year to date, year over year, they're up 18% in website visits. Just because of this focus, multiply that across tens of thousands of business or visitors, it's a lot of additional business that has resulted for them just because we focus on making sure their Google My Business profiles are zero. So you know, a lot of people aren't doing this or giving it, in my opinion, the attention it deserves. You know, it, it's a simple strategy. Think of how you can integrate it. Uh, lastly, so a couple sets here um, on the influencer space. So the first one talking about people who care about influencers more than what you have to say about yourself. Not surprising you're going to say good things about yourself, but what do others have to say? The other is people like influencers that they can relate to, that the relatability, people they see as peers are preferred. So with that, there's a lot of influencer strategies out there on you know, how to find them, how much you should pay them, how to integrate them into your campaigns, etc. I'm not going to focus as much on kind of the larger part, but more so what could you do in your business to create influencers of your existing customers, and also how can you use your current customers to create user-generated content which again, then you're able to use that in your marketing, uh, but also it's just content that lives on the internet um, and serves as good review, good word of mouth for you. So with this, I have an example. Who knows what this arrow, where it is at? I know someone does, because they actually mentioned it earlier. And outside of this team over here, <laughs> where's this arrow? The Henry, exactly. So. Most of you, I would think, have probably seen this before, probably on a social profile, but I think the Henry's probably one of the best local examples of doing this in terms of the aesthetics of the restaurant and you know what they, the opportunities they provide for people to share content about them. Um, if you look at the Henry profiles, you'll see a ton of pictures of people taken with this arrow outside of the restaurants actually become a campaign that they run ongoing, um, encouraging participation in that. But it, if you look at it, it's relatively simple. It's you know an arrow made of light bulbs. It does look cool, but it's not some great thing. But it's become a trend. People you know across the valley want to go get their picture taken next to the arrow for you know, whatever it may be. So think of within your companies, within your businesses, what can you do to create these experiences, things people want to take pictures with people want to share. Not every company has you know, the aesthetics of the Henry, but what else can you want experiences through customer service can you provide that people want to share those experiences, take pictures. Again, it's, why not turn your existing customers into advocates or micro-influencers per se, buy the opportunities you provide to them, the experiences you provide to them. And just ending with one stat on this, I did some Instagram research. So I looked at Yelp to see who the top or most popular competitors with the Henry are. Looked at their Instagrams, what are people posting at those locations, etc. I found the Henry generates nearly three times as much content from users or customers than their next closest competitor. And after that, <coughs> you know, the next or half of that of So they're producing significantly more tags, posts of, you know, whether it be the arrow, the food, any other part of the restaurant if you've been there, but they're generating so much more because they're providing these opportunities for people to share their content, be advocates for them, take advantage of, you know, these opportunities, think of how you can integrate it. 